to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. This morning and every day, we invite all on a journey of acceptance, connection, meaning, and purpose. Welcome to everyone joining us here in the sanctuary and to those joining us online. Know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are physically, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's join our voices together now in song singing from the Blue Chalice hymnal found in your pew, hymn number 14, Womb of Life and Source of Being. And I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as you are comfortable doing.
morning and happy Mother's Day. Please join me in prayer. Holy Mother in God, we come together today in praise and thanksgiving for the gift of life itself. Someone gave us birth and some of us have given birth. All of us have been mothered in our time. All of us have mothered. Let our time today be one of recognition that we arrive from so many places, joy and delight, wistfulness and longing and worry, unmet needs and unfulfilled dreams, loss and sorrow, loss and emptiness, loss and regret. All that life is made of, mothers are made of too. Today we sing the songs of so many, mothers who are single parents, foster parents, mothers who relinquish their young out of necessity, mothers who found their heart in adoption, mothers who left their children in a thousand ways, mothers who rejoice and mothers who mourn, those yearning to be mothers as well as those, as well as those who have chosen not to be mothers. We sing the songs of the grandmother, the auntie, the classroom teacher, the Sunday school teacher, the babysitter, the neighbor and endless, with endless cookies and time. There is a kind of love we cannot live without. It is never too late, no matter our age or situation. We sing a song of gratitude for all the moments of being known, being cherished, being found. Amen. Each Sunday we renew our promises to one another and to God. If these words are unfamiliar to you, please feel free to listen. Please join me now as we recite together the covenant of Memorial Congregational Church. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humanity. And as the Lord's free people, we agree to walk together in all God's ways, made known or to be made known to us. Hey, is the way of peace. It's a peace that we are called to bring into ourselves, into our heart, and to spread throughout the world. It's a big task, but it begins simply enough by sharing a sign of God's peace with those around us. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with those near you, and don't forget our friends at home. Peace to you. I'm so glad we have kids that came up. If not, I was going to have Brother Joey come up and do a one-on-one -on -one children's moment. Yeah. So, as it says in Moses, there was a ram in the bush. Kids came at the last minute. So. Well, good morning. Because like they're really important and they like do a lot for us. They do. They, let's say we can name one thing that our mothers either continue to do for us or have done for us. So I'll start us off. Everyone who is alive today is alive because of a mom. I does everyone agree with that? And look for some aliens in the And we may have to talk after church, but let's just assume we're all here because we had a baby. We had mothers. So 
what else? What is what is something that our mothers do when I've got the best? Do you need to have Do your mom bring you to church every single Sunday? Oh, most Sundays. <laughs> Does your mom love you and care for you and give you hugs and kisses? Does your mom allow you to play with that big thing of sand that I gave you last year? <laughs> Does your mom not like me more than you do? <laughs> I wonder if we can name um, sometimes moms instill in us phrases. Um, like for me, I remember my mom used to tell me uh, I used to maybe not pick up my toys and things like that when I was younger. She used to always say, I brought you into this world and I would take you out of this world. Now, I'm sure she meant that in a loving way. Uh, but then she would follow up with that with, I love you. So I wonder if there's a phrase or a word that gives you comfort that you hear from your mom. My mom says, like, sometimes when she's mad at me, she'll say, like, I'll always love you, but, like, sometimes I get mad at you. Like, I'll never stop loving you. Ah, I love that. I love that. Jackson, you have something. Because you don't get in trouble at home. Right. Julie, you have something to say about that. You get in trouble. You get in trouble. I wonder, I want to open up to the congregation. I wonder, and Julie, would you mind taking the mic? Is there a phrase or a word that reminds you of your mom that it doesn't matter what it was 50 years ago, 10 minutes ago? where you just always have this phrase or word in your head that comes from your mom. And you just put your hand up and Julia will come with the mic. My mother always said, very grateful. Lola had her hand up. My mom always told me that I could do anything I set my mind to. My mom always said, give it to God when I was worried about something. It's hard to do, though. My mother said, wait till your father gets home. <laughs> My mom always said, because when I was little, I would always want to be older than I was. She would always say, enjoy the age you are. My mom always said, we can do this. Uh, uh, as in, when we stuffed the broken shower glass shower door in the Volkswagen. <laughs> My mom always said, oh, Heidi. <laughs> Seeing no more, I'll end with a short story. When I was young, um, my, I was very curious to know what would happen if you locked the bathroom door from the inside. And so I decided that I wanted to find out, but, I, but if something bad happened, I didn't want to get in trouble for it. So I waited until my sister had just finished taking a shower. And after she left the bathroom to go to her room, I snuck in the bathroom, I locked the door, and then I closed it. And then what do you think happened? Yeah, it was stuck. I couldn't get it back open. And so at the time, I was like, all right, well, if no one's in the bathroom, the door cannot open. And so when my mom came down to use the restroom, I got out of there and the bathroom door was locked. And so she knocks on the door and was like, Asia, get out the shower. And then of course, Asia comes from the top of the stairs. Mom, I'm already out the shower. Marcus, are you in the bathroom? No, mom, I am sitting in the kitchen, just reading the Bible like a good little boy. <laughs> what are you talking about? So needless to say, my mom had to call a locksmith and they had to come out and they had to take the whole door apart because back then you didn't have this little key. 
So the thing that I should have done as a good little Christian is to tell my mom the truth. Well, I did five years later. When my mom and I were in the car and she was singing my praises of what a great son that I was, I thought that it was the perfect time to come clean, repent of my sins. And so I told my mom, Mom, do you remember when we lived in West Covina and the door was locked? And she would say, you mean that cost me $150 to, to get the door unlocked? Well, you know, money is, you know, let's not talk about the money. Um, and so I told her that I was very curious to know what happens if you lock the door, and that was me. And she said, you know what, I'm so proud of you that even though it was five years later um, that you were honest with me. And she said that she loved me. And then when we got home, she said, because she loved me so much, I had my choice of being whooped with the belt or a switch from the tree. And I could go out and get my own switch if I wanted to. And I always remember that because it's always, always good to tell the truth. And so my mom has always insulted upon me to tell the truth. And my grandmother has always told me to make up your bed every single morning. And I still make up my bed every single morning till today. So remember, moms are very important. We love moms. And if you do anything bad, you really want to tell them really quickly and just get it over with. Because the whooping that happened five years ago, five earlier, it was still the same whooping, let me tell you. So let me close us in prayer, and then we will receive Dave, who will deliver an amazing sermon. I just know it. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Mother's Day. Thank you so many times that we had to call upon our mothers. Thank you for all those mothers that are represented in the sanctuary today. And be with us, Lord, for some of us do not have our moms or didn't, was not raised by our moms. But we know that the sweet Holy Spirit, that you love us and care for us in a motherly way. And we ask all these things in Jesus' names we pray. Amen. Today's reading comes from uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 6 to 13. It's also found in your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. Listen now for these words from God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and the bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here ends our reading. May we be blessed with wisdom and courage for interpretation. Happy Mother's Day. This, this sermon has nothing to do with mothers, um, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. Can you all hear me okay? okay. <laughs> um, so I'd love to make this interactive. We have a fairly small, intimate group today, so if uh, you agree with anything I say, just say amen or something like that. If you disagree, I'd like to hear how dare you or, or who do you think you are, something like that. But let, let's truly make this interactive. Excellent. Good start. Great. Thank you, Marcus. So from the scripture that Tom read, uh, for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Go out in joy, be led back in peace. Go out and go forth. So in spite of my extensive theological background, 
Uh, I've got nothing especially new or insightful to share this morning. Um, you all will recognize the message, and you know what we're supposed to do. You know it better than I do. We're all supposed to go forth. Think of the benediction that we often hear at the end of worship. Go forth into the world in gladness. We are supposed to go forth and share the gifts and blessings that we have received with others as we venture out. And by making the world a better place, the blessings will come full circle and the trees will clap their hands or their leaves or however trees clap. So who was here last Sunday? Excellent. A lot of people. Did you enjoy it? It was awesome, huh? How do our young people do? Yeah, amen. We're sending them forth, aren't we? Into the world in gladness into a hurting world, into a world that needs that gladness. Our young people go through the confirmation process accumulating insight, wisdom, and self-awareness, refining their values, their faith, and their sense of purpose. MCC nurtures them, we teach them, we encourage them to explore, and we ask them to think. Our young people are blessed with good minds and kind hearts, and we encourage them to use both. Then we send them forth to do God's work. Will they come back? Some will, at least occasionally. <laughs> A few may actually come back and stay. But many will move on as they build their lives. School, jobs, friendships, families. But don't you sometimes wish they could all just stay here? Think of what that would what would that do for us if all those young people stayed with us and stayed right here? Wouldn't that be, what a blessing for MCC. Think of all the additional pledges, Gail and George. <laughs> but we can't hold them back, and we shouldn't want to. We should celebrate their leaving because they are going into the world with gladness, fortified by everything we showed them and everything we taught them. Wherever they end up, they're going to make that place better, aren't they? Am I right? Yes. Amen? Yes. And the world will be better, and the mountains will sing. Think of all the good work MCC's confirmation classes have done. Not just over the past several years, but for hundreds of years now. Generations and generations of them. And they did good in this world because we let them go and because we celebrated their leaving. Ever drop a kid off at college and then drive home alone? Anybody? How'd that feel? Part of us doesn't want to let them grow up and leave. When we have to do that, it's one of the proudest and yet saddest days of our lives. At least it was for us. We just, part of us just wants them to stick around so that the family can stay what it is. That, that precious family, we want it to stay together. We don't want that limb to be removed from the body of the family. But that's not usually the plan. They are going forth because they have to go forth. We fed them, taught them, loved them, but not for our sake. We thought we were doing it for their sake, and that's partly true. But even more importantly, we did it for the world's sake because we want them to go forth and make a difference. We want them to go forth and make this hurting world a little better. It will be a blessing to the world and it'll come around. Through the ache in our hearts, we celebrate their passage because they will make the world better and we will all benefit. I don't know anything about the afterlife and I don't pretend to know anything about God's plan. But I think even when we die, we are going forth in some way. We go forth to an unknowable future or an unknowable place. But hopefully it will be a place that will be better because of the arrival of our spirit. I have a good friend who's been exploring his spirituality. He has a belief that we are here so that God can understand herself better. An interesting thought, huh? 
I've always had this image, or maybe it's just a fantasy, of God as a kind, strong woman, a powerful but gentle mother figure. Oh, did you see what I did? I, I made the Mother's Day connection. It happened. I did that. My, my image of this, this strong, powerful mother is that when we arrive, she'll say, welcome home. Have a seat right here. Have some tea. Now tell me what you learned. So even at the end, we go forth. And those of us left behind need to celebrate. We all have to go forth, whether it's far away or right here in Sudbury. We all, we all learn so much about how to help others during our time here at MCC. So many of you go forth every day, even when you never leave town. I know someone here who spends all day on the phone helping others, all day. She goes forth without ever leaving the house. You are the role models, and we're watching you. For those of you staying right here, we are profoundly grateful to you. You went forth to teach us, and now we are going forth. Some of us will stay right here, and we will continue to enrich our community. Some of us will go to new places, and we will share what we learned there. We will make our new home a better place by living the values and faith that MCC inspired in us. You are our teachers, and you are the teachers of the next generation of visitors. You will prepare them for their journey and their calling. This is what MCC does so well. The confirmation class last Sunday may have already made a difference. Did they make a difference to you? Yeah? When you heard them bravely open up their souls in front of you, weren't you moved? Did you feel something? What did you feel? Marcus, joy. What did you feel? Pride. Amazement. Hope. That's, that was my overwhelming feel. I agree with all of you, but yeah, hope. Didn't you feel more hopeful after last Sunday? Don't we still have that same feeling every time we pass a confirmation class through here? About 22 years ago, Carol and I began church shopping in Sudbury. We were looking a place to raise our son. We visited MCC, I can't remember, a couple of times, I think. And then we happened to show up on a special Sunday. Anybody guess what, what, special, what was special about that Sunday that we showed up at? Anybody? Say, say again, speak loud. Confirmation. I was afraid somebody was going to say annual meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, for, George, I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> I'm doing the comedy up here. <laughs> it was Confirmation Sunday. And that's what did it. We listened to the young folks back then, two decades ago, their statements of faith, their thoughts, their beliefs, and most importantly, their doubts. They were incredibly honest and, and brave and sincere, just like our young folks were a week ago. Later that day, Carol and I said, we found our place. As you go forth, be aware of how you make this aching world a little better and know that others are watching you and learning how to go forth themselves. So go forth into the world in gladness, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, and show love to everyone. Amen. Over those 384 years, we've had so many folks come in and out of these doors, wherever these doors have physically been located. <clears throat> there will be times over the next few months when we're saying goodbye to some folks. <clears throat> and yesterday, or last week, along with the um, confirmands, we also welcomed Pastor Marcus and Curtis uh, as new members. 
And um, I wanted to invite them both up. We have a couple gifts for you from our welcoming and connections. Welcome and connections, what is it? Have we decided ING is there or not? I'm not sure. <coughs> from our connections and, and welcoming uh, ministry. So these are, this is one of those um, traditions that we've had here for a very long time at MCC. Some homemade bread for you to bring home and to nourish your body in all of the ways that you have and will continue to nourish your soul and our souls here. So, once again, welcome. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Mother of compassion, call to be one body. We friggin' ourselves into a million selfish pieces. Your children of love, we insist on the right to despise our siblings. Through your perfect love was broken for us, we are afraid to give of ourselves to the world. Abide in us. Forgive us of our sins, so we may live boldly, love fearlessly, and share the good news of Jesus Christ in the word and in the deed. Do you feel it? 
They're deep down in your hearts. God's love is alive, beating, breathing in you. Because God abides in us, we can live for others, allowing God's love to bear fruit in us. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. We come to this table surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Others in this room with us now, those who have shared this meal in this space for generations, and others that we carry in our hearts. I invite you now, as the Spirit calls to you, to lift up the names of those whom you hold in prayer. Today, Holy One, we thank you for your human love, that love shown especially by mothers who continue to forgive regardless of weakness and failure. We thank you for your love, which is stronger than death and embraces all which you have created. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, singing and saying together, holy, holy, holy. wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior and brother, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who walked with us the road of our world's suffering and who was known to us in the breaking of bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread after he blessed it and break it, the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given to you. In the same way, he took wine and after giving thanks for it, he poured it out and gave it to his disciples, saying to them, this is the cup of a new relationship with God, poured out in my blood so that no more blood needs to be spilled. Take this and share it. I shall drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. Let us pray. Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and cup to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread so that we may know your touch in all bread, all matter. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among us, community through the centuries, and shared with us now, made one in Christ and one with each other and our siblings around the world. We offer these gifts with them ourselves, a single holy, loving sacrifice. Amen. Loving God, like a mother, you brought all things into being through trial and truth-telling, touch and tenderness. You nurture your people and lead us in the ways of justice and peace. Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup. May they become for us like Christ's body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And as the bread and the cup, which we now eat and drink, be changed into us, may we be changed again into you, born of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. 
In a moment, the deacons will come with um, cubed up pieces of bread. I invite you to take a piece from the tray and pass it to your neighbor. Hold on to it until we all have a piece to share and we will share in that meal together. And then the deacons will come by with little cups of grape juice. Again, I invite you to take a cup, pass it to your neighbor and hold on to it so we can all share it together. When Jesus shared this meal with his friends and disciples, seated at that table with him were one who would betray him, one who would doubt him, one who would deny him, many who would run from him. He welcomed them all. He knew that, and still he shared that meal with them. Surely we are welcome to this table. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. The table of bread and cup is now ready. It is the table of forgiveness, the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world in whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who have liked to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is here we are invited to meet Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things have been made ready. This is the bread of life. Eat and be nourished.
This is the cup of blessing. Drink and be refreshed. Giving thanks for God's gift of community and this meal. Let us pray using the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Saying together the Lord's Prayer as it's written in your bulletin or using whatever words bring you comfort. Our Father, who art in heaven. announcements to share with you. On Communion Sunday, we'd like to remind folks of the Deacons Fund. This is a fund available and monitored by the Deacons um, that is uh, available to members of the church who need a little bit of extra financial help. If you or somebody that you know needs some help, please feel free to reach out to, to me or to Bobby or to Rick. And if you find that you have a few extra dollars to spare, I invite you to donate to the fund. Uh, there are specially marked envelopes in your pew, or you can also go on our website, uh, mccsudbury.org, uh, for more information. <clears throat> uh, good news, this has kind of gone back and forth over the past few months a little bit, but uh, the Pride celebration in Sudbury will be happening this year, June 9th, uh, from 2 to 4 at Curtis Middle School. Um, and we hope to see a lot of you, you there, and we are also planning to have a booth there for the church. If you would like to, um, to volunteer in any capacity, either to, to be at our booth or to help um, to, with other activities that are going on that day, please uh, let me know or let Curtis know um, or let Betsy know, and um, we will uh, have a really great time. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, next week, we will be uh, having another collection for our Silver, Be Silver Bell uh, Holiday Fair. So we invite you to bring clean, saleable jewelry, books, and um, white elephants, which is still a term that I don't like and I want to define better, but, <laughs> um, uh, uh, but you know what they are. You know, household goods, uh, the, the things that we can, we can sell um, that will be useful to folks in our, in our community. And that also might make us a, a little bit of extra change. Uh, and that will happen before and after our service slash annual meeting uh, next week. And also, um, there is a plant shop that started last year that will continue this year. So as you start going through your garden and finding out all the stuff that's, uh, that you have too much of, start making some cuttings and um, we'll start collecting those as well. Uh, and now I have, uh, Gail has something that she'd like to share with us. Hi, um, I'm here for stewardship. This is the last pledging plea, I promise. Oh, at least for the in-person plea. Um, I, I do want to tell you, um, my mother, who I still miss very much, um, was the head of the delinquent tax department um, for the county of Duchess in the state of New York. However, I am glad to tell you that the vast majority of the members and friends of MCC, especially people who are really involved in our, in our programs, have pledged. And we are, in the words of Bobby's mother, very grateful. However, and we have created a balanced budget. It is not, it supports all our programs and ministries, just not as well as we would like to support them. So if any of you are feeling very grateful, like Bobby's mother, and um, want to um, increase your pledge, please see George Connor or email him, and we would also be very grateful. And in the words of my mother, yes, we can do this. Thank you. 
It, is our, uh, it has been our practice to read the, the warrant for the annual meeting in the week before. Um, so I invite up Dave Pendleton, our moderator, to do so. Hello again. Uh, actually, a couple quick announcements about annual meeting. Um, uh, as most of you know, I've been the moderator for MCC for the past nine years. I don't know where that went. Uh, however, I'm not able to be here next Sunday for the meeting because Joey is graduating. And apparently that's the priority. So. But also, as you probably know, our family will be relocating to Maine later this year, so I, I need to resign from the position anyway. I did want to announce, and I don't see him here, but Dan Rippey has agreed to throw his hat in the ring for moderator. So Dan will be our moderator going forward starting next Sunday, uh, assuming that you all vote him in at the beginning of the annual meeting. Uh, I, I assume most of you know Dan. He's a wonderful guy, wonderful person, very, very faithful person, and he will do a great job as moderator. Um, also, in case you hadn't heard, annual meeting will be held during the worship service next Sunday. So if you want to attend annual meeting, you need to be here at 10 a.m. to participate in the whole service because the annual meeting will be sort of incorporated into the service. Uh, Zoom is another option. The, the uh, meeting and worship service will be Zoomed next Sunday as well. And we're hoping one of the benefits from this is we get you all out of here a little bit earlier than we have in the past. So hopefully that will work out. Uh, I, I don't know if you noticed, but the annual report is available in the parlor. Please grab a copy on your way out and please try to read it between now and next week. It's filled with important information about uh, MCC's activities and it will be in your best interest to be familiar with what's going on before attending the meeting next week. Uh, I noticed there, there is not a budget in this annual report because I believe it's still being uh, finalized and worked out. But hopefully that will be available a few days before the meeting by email, folks. Okay. So we'll, we'll, get, you, we'll get you a budget uh, as soon as possible. But please do grab the annual report and, and have a look at that. All right. So now, as is our custom at MCC, I'm going to very quickly read the warrant for the meeting next week. Article 1, to receive the annual reports of the officers and committees of the church and take any action relative thereto. Article 2, to see if the church will appropriate $379,232 or some other sum for the combined operating and outreach budgets of Memorial Congregational Church of Sudbury Incorporated for the fiscal year July 1, 2024 through June 30, 2025. Article 3, to elect the church's officers for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2024. And Article 4, to address any other business which may be brought before the annual meeting. Finally, I just want to thank all of you for entrusting me in this role for the past nine years. I'm very, very deeply grateful for your faith in me. We are grateful for all of the gifts at MCC, for all of the ways that folks contribute in time and talent and treasure. And so giving thanks and raising our voices to God, I invite you to rise as you're comfortable doing so as we sing together our doxology.
O oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. In return, we humbly offer up our gifts. Send the blessing of your Holy Spirit over all that we receive and over us. Help us to use our gifts to go out into your world and to do your work following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Let's join our voices together again singing hymn number 83, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless us. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless us. May God, who broods as a mother broods over, over her children, bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Creator, Christ, and Spirit, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. We have received God's blessing, and now I invite you to share a blessing with those around you as we sing together, Go, my children, with my blessing. Happy Mother's Day and have a great week.